Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to do a nice quick one around adding data labels to your R graphs. And in this example, I'm going to be showing you how to take you from a line chart that looks like this to a line chart that looks like this. So let's head over to our studio. So this one's going to be a fairly quick one. I was tempted to include it in my last video which you can view below around creating this line chart. Got all the code here so you can understand what all the code means because I'm going to skip past that point and start showing you how to add in data labels and the issues you might come across when you try and use certain functions to actually add in data labels and then how to get around those. And also we're going to be using a new library called ggrepel and this allows you to have a little bit more functionality around how you do data labels because as you will see we'll hit a few snags with how the data labels come out when you just use the standard ones that are part of ggplot so as i said i've already loaded in the graph and done all the information here if you'd like to know how i created this graph please check out the video in the description below which also includes the data set that's been used and then also how to add in how to import excel documents so just give the logic behind how I've done the additional bits going into the line graph. All I've done is made the line graph into its own data frame. So it's up here and it means that then whenever I'm typing out any additional text, I can just say all this code is in this little bit here because it's called line and lines there. And then I can just reference by adding in just like how I've done here where you have the different plus signs it's just adding on additional parts. So in essence, every time you see a new line here and here and here, it's the equivalent of me adding in a plus sign here and then adding it to the bottom there. But I just don't have to highlight all and run. And it just keeps it a lot cleaner when I'm trying to explain how each part works. So if we get on with creating our first data label, we're going to be using geom underscore text. And then we're going to be using the data label based on the sum of new cases. Now, if we were to add that on to our line chart and run this, we'll get data labels, but they're very hard to read and their positioning isn't the greatest. So what we can do is use the same function and then we can use check underscore overlap equals true. And what that basically does is there's any overlaps, it will remove any of those particular data labels. So if we run this now, you'll see we've lost some of the data labels because now no overlap, but that still doesn't sort out the issue we have being able to see the numbers. So you think, okay, what can we do here? Maybe if we had the data labels in a box, so then they can then stand out more. So then if you wanted to be able to put data labels in a box, then this is when we won't use geom text, we'll use geom underscore label. So we use exactly the same part that we've done up here with geom underscore text. It's just instead of text, we've got label. So we do geom underscore label, and then we set where we want the labels to be part of. And in this case, again, with new cases. So if we run this, we now can see the numbers. Yay. However, we've still got this overlapping problem. So you think, Ah, okay. Well, we had that problem before. So let's just try that again. So basically you just go geom underscore label, type in exactly like we did here. And if we run that, nothing happens. And the reason being check underscore overlap is not in geom underscore label. No idea why, but it's just the way it is. So instead of pulling all your hair out, some very nice person has created a package called ggrepel, which gives us the function to be able to actually to stop making them overlap and space them out as well. So all you'd need to do is type in install.packages and then in brackets and quotation marks, type in ggrepel. And then you want to do library and then in brackets ggpropel. And if you run this, this will install it and have it ready for you to start using as we'll show below. Now we have this loaded in. Now we can start using the function geom underscore label, just like we had before, but with underscore repel. And what I'm gonna do here is, as you'll notice, the numbers are a little bit hard to read because they're quite large. So it'd be good to have a comma in to separate at a thousand points. So what I've done is add where you have label here, 
I've added in the addition of scales, which if you've seen in previous videos has been used to add in the formatting that you use in the X and Y axis. And then we, we type in comma and then in brackets, new cases and then close bracket, close bracket. But the reason being is that's one set of brackets. That's the second set of brackets and that's the third set. And now if we highlight all and run, we won't have any overlapping and we still have the nice little boxes and we have the comma separator. Now this is perfectly usable. However, you still kind of look at it and go, okay, we know that kind of there, that's, we can see a line's pointing there, that's to there, that's to there. Oh, is that there? Is that there? And, it's like, and just because it's, it's a bit hard to kind of tell with all, even though they are closely aligned to all the points, it'd still be nice to kind of just have them a little bit spaced out. So all you need to do is create the same logic you got here and it's just within the part here we want to add in what we want some form of padding which means you're going to be pushing either in or out depending on which way you want to do it by a certain amount now i've done 0.3 because if you suddenly do a lot so let me show you what it looks like if you do 0.3 there you go. Now we can see more lines sort of pointing to where the points are. So we actually can see, okay, we know that's to there, that's to there, that's to there. Da, 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 da. But if we were to change that padding to say one, you'll suddenly have them all over and it just makes it a little bit harder to sort of read. That might be okay depending on what your line chart's doing, but for this particular line chart, I found that 0.3 was the best sort of view, which you can see here. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of the video. Was there anything else you wanted me to cover? Any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. And as always, until next time.